welcome. I'm Colin Daniel from RiftNinja.com and I'm here to give you a wee little taste of what's happening in my ultimate blues course. And uh, this is all about cores, the first stage of my course. And so this lesson is going to talk to you a bit about some of the theory uh, that I go into great detail. And uh, if you want to check out the course, you can. It's at riffninja.com slash blues chords. But here, I got something for you anyways, if you want to check it out or not. Um, one, four, five. I don't know whether you know the one, four, five or not or what it is. It's just, it's just three numbers. And then uh, I know a lot of people say, oh yeah, I know the one, four, five. And they'll say, yeah, like G, C, and D. And that's true. G, C, and D are 1, 4, and 5 in G major. The G is the 1 chord, the C is the 4 chord, and the D is the 5 chord. See, 1, 4, 5 can be related to a lot of different things in a lot of different keys. Uh, it can be used to go from key to key. You can use it to transpose. You can use it to understand your guitar better. Um, you really need a detailed understanding of 1, 4, 5. But let's to help you, uh, show you that you can learn the fretboard of your guitar a lot easier if you know 1, 4, and 5. For example, there are seven letter names that work the musical alphabet. The first seven letters of the alphabet are A, B, C, D, F, and G. So we've taken those. Those are the only letter names we have in music. We've taken those and those apply and are used in all our keys. The flats and sharps are for the notes in between. And what happened was later on uh, in our progression and our, our growth with music and how everybody put into it over thousands of years, um, of course we developed that more and we had to add uh, the sharps and flats because we discovered that there are notes in between. And so these, but we've only got seven letters, right? And one, four, and five uh, is always going to be the same distance. So on your guitar, an easy way of looking at it, if you're not like a numbers guy, is your guitar is tuned to one and four. Four is, represents the perfect fourth distance or interval. So if E is one, A is four. If A is one, D is four. And I'm talking about open strings right now. But that means wherever you go on the fretboard, You've got a one and a four. So if you can get this pattern, you got one, four, and five in every key, and that gives you chord roots, scale roots, and it also helps you learn the notes on your guitar. My suggestion is you learn the uh, seven basic keys, the one, four, five, and the seven basic keys. That'll help you a lot. Um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take it the key of A. Uh, now that's not A minor or... A major because 1, 4, and 5 are universal to both. So there's my A on the 6th string 5th fret. Right across from it is my 4 on the 5th string 5th fret. So if this is A, my D is going to be 4, and 2 frets up, a tone up is going to be my 5, which is E. So I've got A, D, and E. I mean, how many times have you seen A, D, and E chords, right? Well, now we have the A, D, and E roots here. That gives you the root, and it's octave. Now, an octave is important, too, because it's the beginning and the end, of, uh, beginning of one scale. The low, low note octave is the beginning of a scale, and the high note octave would be the end of a scale and the start of the next octave. So, you know, we have a close here. So that's one, that's four, that's five, and that's octave. Wherever you go on the fretboard, one, four, five, and octave. Even if it's flat or sharp, it doesn't matter. In between, one, four, five, an octave. Great for a bass player. Those are, when we play these three harmonies plus the octave, that's what I call the perfect harmony box. Wherever you go, this works on the sixth string and the fifth string quite easily. This is one, this is four, this is five, this is octave. Now if we cross over the fifth string, this is one, this is four, this is five, and this is octave. If I know this is C, 
and I know my 1, 4, 5 is C, F, and G, then this has got to be a C. My F has got to be the 4, so that's got to be an F. And this has got to be a G, and that's got to be my octave, C. So you don't have to memorize the fretboard as much as you have to know a little bit about the 1, 4, 5. You know, say up higher on the fretboard. Here's a C, 8th fret, 6th string. If I know my 1, 4, 5 is C, F, and G, and I already quoted that down here, C, F, G, the same pattern can happen up here. Here's my C, here's my 4, which is F, here's my 5, which is G, and here's my octave C, 1, 4, and 5. So you can actually cover the entire fingerboard using 1, 4, and 5. Um, if you know more about it and you want more detail on it, you'll be better, much better at your guitar and your concept of the guitar, your fingerboard will shrink and uh, you'll get more out of it and you'll be able to apply more and attain more knowledge too while you're at it. So if you're interested in learning more about this subject, because I spent a lot of time on this subject because I feel like it's really important. It's important to uh, creating your own chord progressions, creating your own lead solos, uh, building your own chords. It's applied to a lot of things. And to, like today, I showed you, you can apply it towards learning the notes on your guitar better. All right. Uh, if you're interested in that, you should check it out. Come and check it out. RiffNinja.com slash blues chords. Thanks for your time. And I hope you learned something valuable today. Take care.